Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Grumpy Old Gamers Podcast. You can't teach an old gamer new tricks. I'm Ryan, and I got the grumpy crew in the house with me. We got rowdy, rowdy bunch tonight. <laughs> Happy New Year. Rob is out of control. He's blowing things up already. So uh, okay. I have Rob with me. As you, Hello. If you're watching the video here, you just seen him set off the streamers. <laughs> set him off just, a little early. A little early. <laughs> Hope you got more. <laughs> oh, I got more. Perfect. And we got Damon with us tonight. Hey, guys. How you doing? <laughs> good, good. So how's everyone doing? Can you uh, believe we're like four days away from Christmas here? No, not even close. Right? No. Is that what it is? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Just finished off the Christmas shopping today, so. Same. Oh, nice. And you know yeah. what? Like, pre-COVID, if you went, like, on the 21st of December, mm-hmm. it, it, it was almost like a sport. I went to Kingsway, yeah. which is, like, one of the bigger malls here in town, at noon, and I parked pretty much near the front, like, the doors I was wow. going to. Like, it was, okay. it was dead. I Emerald was... Hills and Sherwood Park, it was, it was like, um, it was like blood sport. Oh, Armageddon! <laughs> it was <laughs> awful. Kumite? You were in the Kumite in Sherwood Park? It's awesome. <laughs> ah, don't do a good jump, Claude Van Damme. Pretty you gotta throw sure. something in your eyes first. That's right. Can't see. Dip the, uh, the hand in the, um, <laughs> in the glue in the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. Well, um, just because we're recording on Discord tonight, I actually didn't set the bumpers up, so I'm just going to move right on into housekeeping. Sure. And I'll let you, uh, I'll let you take that, um, I'll let you start us off there, Rob. Sure. Uh, you bet. I'll, uh, the Hope Mission fundraiser, uh, just wrapped up here yesterday. Oh. So thank you to everyone who, uh, contributed. We got to the $200 marker. So uh, we Excellent. will be doing some some bean boozled uh, this year. Damon is setting up a uh, special way to do it. With uh, we're going to do some video gaming Jeopardy. So, oh yeah, going to get some questions in there and uh, fantastic. We got the six gen bean boozled, the brand new. Uh, oh my newest god, release. Yeah. So it's got bandage, I believe, and liver and onions. Yeah, those are the two new, the new uh, ones. Yeah, like bandage, like. That even... just sounds disgusting, but liver and onions sounds like that wouldn't be terrible <laughs> if you like liver, I guess. Yeah, I guess if you like it's liver a... and onions, and yeah, it may yeah, not be they're... bad at all. They're all classic than... failures. <laughs> it's better than dirty dishwater, that's for sure. So, oh yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna post on the the page here uh, when we're doing that. So thanks to everyone again, and um, because of the fundraising there, uh, Damon and myself. Well, Damon, Damon uh, held my hand while I was doing it, but we did a scary game, played uh, The Evil Within on stream there with, uh, man, at one point we had like 25 people watching. It was <laughs> like and 377 the first day views, and uh, it was great. Everyone got to see me get chopped up so many times. <laughs> so many by times. the same guy with the chainsaw. It was, uh, <laughs> that was... That was crazy, but it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I think everyone had a good time. Thank you, Damon, for uh, protect uh, making me feel safer as I was doing it. That's, it was uh, fun. That was a great time. You did great. I don't know. I, I think you wanted to keep playing, but uh, so yeah, yeah. I, it was. Uh, it played kind of like garbage on the PC. I, I wish I'd kind of known that before uh, <laughs> before we played it, or maybe that's how the game plays. Maybe it is a fifteen frame a second game. I don't know, but. It was a good time. We'll have to do some more. Uh, yeah, I, I more checked it out afterwards there. I wasn't around. And uh, yeah, it was. It was almost like you wanted to keep playing. Like you're ha- you having a pretty good time. Not like when we were when you played Resident Evil last year. We were just like, I'm done. I don't, I don't, <laughs> how much longer we got? Rob, it's been five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, sh- that shotgun. He was just waiting for it. He was. Yeah. It's like, just give me the shotgun, man. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So it was a good time, and thanks to everyone again. It's uh, raised two hundred dollars for the Hope Mission, which is the main thing out of all this. So yeah, and we're gonna eat some crappy jelly beans and some good jelly beans. You won't know. <laughs> you won't know. Nope. Not till it's done. So 
All right, and the, the only other bit of housekeeping we'll uh, add in there again is, uh, you know, Buzzsprout has given us the, uh, the privilege of being one of their affiliates. And all you got to do is there will be a, there's a link in any of the notes wherever this is posted. And you click on there, and if you sign up for one month, they will send you a $25 Amazon gift card. And then, you know what? You can create a podcast. Like I like we say every week, uh, us two dummies have figured it out, and we're having we have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, check out Buzzsprout. They, uh, it's the easiest way to uh, podcast. Absolutely. And with that, let's uh, yeah, let's move on into news. Um. So, we took another two week break there. Uh, I think, yeah, it was just last week was insane for both of us, right? Um, so we, uh, quite a, oh, I forget what date it was now, but it was kind of almost at the beginning of the month there that the Video Game Awards happened. And uh, let's, uh, let's go over the winners December here. Yeah, December 9th. Yeah. So pretty close to two weeks ago. So uh, Game of the Year ended up being It Takes Two, which uh, I'm, I'm still playing through with the wife here, and it is a great, great game. It is so creative, uh, so well put together. It's just, it's, I, can, I don't disagree with this at all. The one thing I disagree with, and I thought I had read that Forza, <laughs> Forza Horizon 5, uh, got released um, after the deadline, but it's in here. Yep. It went. Yep. It won something else later on, so it wasn't even contention for game of the year. Yeah, it didn't even get nominated for game of the year, which is pretty strange. So, uh, best game direction went to Death Loop, a game I still need to try. It seems very artistic, right? One of those, um, one of those ones with a very artistic style, and yeah, oh, definitely, it's got like a very, like uh, Art Deco, I think they call that. Yeah, very... there you go. There you go. Uh, best narrative, uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the, one of the surprise uh, surprise games of this year. You know, I think a lot of people have seen it was coming from Square Enix, and they were like, "These are the guys who made Avengers." <laughs> the Square Enix redemption story, right? Yeah. That's, uh... um, I'm actually still playing through that myself. Uh, I've been streaming it on our Twitch channel and putting it on our YouTube page, and it's yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great little shooter. Uh, best art direction went to Deathloop. Uh, best score music went to Near Replicant, which I think was a remake of the... It was a remake of the original, yeah. 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 And they were having some fun with the version. That actually is the game title at version 1.224744871399. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because... <laughs> near that's what they do Uh uh-huh uh best audio design went to four is a five so why am i holding wire strippers (laughs) wire strippers for everyone uh best performance went to maggie robertson for resident evil village and maggie is of course uh lady dimitriscu 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 (laughs) Did the internet get to vote on this? Because yeah. that seems like the internet voted on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think so. Uh, games all sorts for, of phrases. Games for Impact. So a game for Impact is a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Call of Duty Vanguard. Call of Duty <laughs> Vanguard won that. No, Life is Sorry. Strange True Colors won. <laughs> Makes sense. Um... Best ongoing game is Final Fantasy XIV. That beat out Call of Duty Warzone, Apex Legends, Fortnite. Um, just on a little segue, did you guys hear that they actually like suspended sales of this game right now? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, why is yeah, that? Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy story because nobody can log in to play it. Yeah. So they, it's actually a pro, a pro consumer move where they're, uh, they're like, okay, well, like, why would we sell it to people if they can't actually play it? Uh, they don't have the amount of servers to be able to handle the player count. 
So they actually uh, kudos to them to oh, okay. suspend suspend that. Like they could have just taken all the money and been like, "Yep, yeah, sorry, we're yeah. we're full." Yeah. But uh, yeah, good for them. Yeah, are there game and, companies that would do that, Damon? That sounds really despicable. I don't know anyone who might. Uh... <laughs> yeah, don't give them any ideas, Rob. <laughs> So I mean, also it's it's almost a ten year old game. This game, right? Yeah. And oh, is it? Okay. It also uh, what brought on the latest resurgence is they just released an, uh, a very well reviewed expansion pack. Ah. So this game, okay. the, so it's seeming like this game is is having the No Man's Sky story before, <laughs> yeah. long before No Man's Sky right. did. <laughs> okay. What Final Fantasy area are they on now? Uh, uh 15 but 15? 16 okay. is in the works yeah ah gotcha okay yeah. I'm just curious i haven't played one in a long long time yeah uh best indie game was kenna kenna bridge kima kenna bridge of spirits <clears throat> um All right on that's cool yeah I, I've been, anyone, anyone try that or no i've had it on my uh no. i've had it on my wish list for a while watching for a good sale on it but um, best debut indie game, so the from the first game from an independent studio, and uh, Kenna Bridge of Spirits won that as well. Nice. Uh, best mobile game was Genshin Impact, which I didn't realize was a mobile game as well. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, play it on just about anything. And ten cents watching you the entire time you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, allegedly though. allegedly yeah, yeah uh best community support final fantasy 14 won that uh that makes sense best vr ar game went to resident evil 4 so that's the one on uh i don't know okay yeah um innovation cool. and accessibility went to forza horizon 5 yeah that game has um isn't that the one that has sign language for the uh, captions as well if you want it's it's either coming or it is out. But That's yeah, cool. it is. Well, good for them. That's really good. So best action game went to Returnal. Oh. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, a beat out Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, and Far Cry 6. Still, like, apparently a good game with a horrible, horrible name. <laughs> it's just... Eternal, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, best action adventure game went to Metroid Dread. I'm glad it won something for sure. Actually, time. I'm uh, not that they're like a de facto standard in the uh, in gaming media, but Time Magazine gave Metroid their Metroid Dread their game of the year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know they were in even into that, but yeah, I saw an article on that. Yeah. How uh, how how far have you gone into a Metroid Dread? About halfway, I'm gonna say. Yeah. I kind of I, I kind of fell out when uh, like December. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Oh yeah, I hear it's you. It's a busy time, so. Yeah, I I kind of fell off too. I'm almost thinking like I might just restart, because you know, like a game like that, you kind of have mo you need momentum as you're playing. You do. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I think it'd be really hard Did... to go back in and pick it up. Games really need like a. A mode for dads and um where it's like in the middle of the game you can hit like a tutorial and it like reteaches you the basics again and <laughs> yeah like hey just so you remember how to jump and roll into a ball yeah. and so hey. turn the tutorial back on dad mode like dad mode yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or yeah. sony if you're listening if you haven't logged in in like three months they're like we're gonna we'll let you play the tutorial again because we think yeah. you might have forgot a thing or two it's a great idea uh, best RPG went to Tales of Arise. I've heard, uh, you know, I've heard a couple times now that it's a, one of the best RPGs ever made after you play 10 hours. Then it, then it starts getting good. <laughs> Funny how so many RPGs will say that, eh? It's yeah. like, once you get past the thir per first 35 hours, it really gets going. <laughs> um, <laughs> best fighting game uh, goes to Guilty Gear. Sure. Uh, best family game is, is It Takes Two. Oh, best sports racing game for the Horizon 5. Yay! It beat out Hot Wheels Unleashed. 
Yep. Uh, best sim strategy game went to Age of Empires 4. I've, had that on my, I've got that on my desktop to try out. <laughs> I'm uh, curious to see that Inscription was uh, nominated there. I don't know if you've heard about Inscription or not. Yeah. I've watched some guys play through it. It's a, it's a pretty fun it's story. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, it's a weird game. It looks really good, though. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Best multiplayer game went to It Takes Two. Uh, content creator of the year was Dream. I don't know. Sure. Um, oh, my goodness. Best esports athlete. <laughs> you get to say his name. Good luck. Well, he's known as Simple, and I'll just leave it at there that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> And um, best esports coach went to Kekoma. Koma. Wow. Yeah. They have coaches. They do. Good for them. Uh, Good for them. Best esports event was the 2021 League of Legends World Championship. And the best it's... esports game is League of Legends. I'm just looking at the list of best esports games. Like, are there any there that were released? Any newer than five years ago? Valorant. Okay, Valorant. Fair enough. Yeah. But like, CS:GO is like a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. um, Dota. <laughs> but I guess that's the that's the games they like. And Dota that's... Two and League of Legends. Yeah, they got to be pushing ten years those games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Best esports team was uh, Nautis Vencier. Sure. And the most anticipated game, so we had uh, Starfield, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and Elden Ring. And Elden Ring ended up taking that. That's interesting. It is, right? I guess it's the newest, um, it's the only one that's really a new IP. Well, yeah. I guess maybe Starfield as well, but Starfield's never coming out, so. Not in um, our lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> our kids may play that game so I gotta say um, this this is kind of the first time where I kind of felt like I did miss out on something not watching these like the hype train rolled pretty good on this and then the day it was happening like it, it seemed pretty exciting like I'm gonna I think I'll make some time next year and try and catch this yeah yeah some of the trailers that were released too that's uh, that's, that's what we're gonna talk cool. about next that's... Rob nice segways are me segways are me so how did you got did any of these catch your eye anyone in like for the the announcements or are you talking about the winners and oh no sorry yeah we'll, we'll move on to the announcements now um did any of them catch your eye damon like any, any, any of them get you pretty hyped what got me hyped on the announcements? Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to throw it to Rob while I try and read, because I missed it as well. Sure. So well, and... there's a couple couple there that have got me, uh, like, I don't know if you guys saw anyone, or if you had a chance to play the uh, Matrix Awaken kind of uh, Unreal Engine 5 demo. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Holy yes. crap, that looks good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's very exciting, because that's the first time in a long time since like the PlayStation 2 came out where I looked at graphics in a game and I was like that's better than anything I've ever seen. Yeah. I was pretty pretty surprised about Hellblade 2 that that was actually a playable section of the game that somebody was playing. That, yeah. Yeah. That right. That was pretty Yeah, that was pretty Whew. surprising. That looked really good. I, yeah. I was like I was like anybody could show a CG cutscene, no big deal, and then I was like no, that's, somebody was playing that section of the game. I'm sure it was yeah. like a like a like a showpiece within the game, but still that that was impressive. That looked pretty amazing. Yeah. What do you guys think of the Star Wars Eclipse uh, announcement? I guess I not really in gameplay, but no, uh, I'm interested. I mean, after just playing uh, Detroit Become Human, there, uh, right? You know, I really, I kind of really like that that gameplay style. So if it's anything like that at all, um, yeah, like. Can't wait to try that. Yep, absolutely. Um, any Alan Wake fans? Or? Before we go any further, though, uh, yeah, yeah. with The Matrix Awakens, like, I probably, I put, 
over 40 minutes into that game. Like, the gameplay section is only 5 or 10 minutes, and then I spent another, like, just goofing around. Like, you can go in and, like, change all the filters, and you can, like, see, yeah. you know, ch- like, just go down to yeah. see what, what polygons are being, like, uh, used where, and, like, oh, my God. Yeah, it, yeah it, you can move, like, the location around. of the sun yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, like, yeah, to try and get the shadows however you want them. It's interesting, yeah. Um, I did, uh, if anyone wants to check out our Twitch and YouTube channels, I did stream stream me playing it there so you can see it for yourselves it probably doesn't do it justice though because <laughs> it's pretty right Whew. yeah but uh yeah uh, alan wake 2 um that uh uh looks like they're taking a survival uh well yeah it's going to be their remedies for survival horror horror game um i never tried the first alan wake was it like a action shooter? Um, it's a thriller. It's like uh, it's somewhere between an, an action adventure and a survival horror, but it's not very survival horror. It's it's good. It's actually it's definitely worth a play. I I kind of want to play through it again now that it's been remastered. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's good. It's really good. Okay. Um, out of kind of out of nowhere, they announced uh, Wonder Woman. From the makers of Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, Monolith. And from, I guess, uh, I didn't watch it on the awards, I just watched the trailer, but I guess they, it's been kind of released that it's going to be back on the, I can't remember the name of the island where Wonder Woman comes from, but that's where the adventure is going to be taking place. So they're, they're thinking that it's going to be very much designed, kind of like how uh, Shadow of Mordor was. Hmm. And they'll probably get to use their patented, uh, um, right. oh, what's it called? The Nemesis system? Nemesis system, yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty revolutionary. Uh, they had the, a new Elden Ring trailer. I mean, this game is really piquing my interest, man. Yeah, like... This really looks good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming in February. Apparently, every game is... This, in 2022 is just coming out in February and then you've yep. got the rest of the year to play them is what, is what it kind of looks like here. Right. I mean, they're all announced for February. They all get pushed back to sometime yeah. good well point. after that. But yeah. uh, We got to see some actual gameplay of the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the portion they showed featured the Flash. It looks like they're holding their cards pretty close on all the other Justice League members that are going to be in there. Yep. Damon, what did you think? Did you watch the uh, Halo TV series trailer? I did. I did watch it. it. There was not a ton there for me to go on, I'll be honest. Yeah. I was like, okay. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not saw, a lot. I was kind of going through YouTube the other day and I saw like things you missed in the halo trailer or in the halo television series trailer and it was like a 15 minute video and i'm like it was like 60 <laughs> seconds of a of a clip how did you get I, I didn't watch that maybe i should do that but um i did i don't think i missed a lot i'm a pretty big halo fan but <laughs> i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait for that one uh they showed off arc raiders which is going to be a new free-to-play game from uh x dice devs and uh, it looked pretty good. Um, oh yeah, Forspoken, which is uh, it's that uh, Square Enix game. But yeah, oh yeah, it is only coming to PlayStation. I was gonna say they've been yeah. they officially announced it at one of the PlayStation events not long ago. Like the the official name for it. And that one I looks. Think you need- you need to skip every second Square Enix game, though. It's like Windows versions. Right. <laughs> need to, uh... Yeah. <laughs> just wait and see, because, uh... Yeah, it looks amazing, but, I mean, I guess so did Avengers. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's a good point. Uh, there was another gameplay trailer for Horizon Forbidden West. That, uh, that game's looking pretty awesome. <sighs> yeah, it sure is. Um... Have you have you played much more of uh, 
Zero no, though, bro? Have you I, had I haven't. Been, I've been working from home remotely, so I, I work. I sit in this chair for eight hours a day. Right. And then the last thing I want to do is put my butt back in the chair. Mm. But uh, I'm off this yeah. week, so I'm, I'm going to play a little bit more here. Just uh, it, I was really enjoying the time with it, but I just, with the old man's spine, I haven't been able to get back to the chair. Yeah. So, what about uh, what about the Sonic Frontiers footage? How? how... <laughs> See, now would have been the appropriate time to set those crackers off. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I gotta ration them now. Um, I'm cautiously excited. But I mean, I've been cautiously excited for yeah. many other Sonic games. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish this wasn't done by Sonic Team, but uh, I'm hoping it's more generations and less uh, forces. But mm. it looks really good. Um, have to see. They, I mean, they it was more of like a teaser trailer, really. But yeah, true. Yeah. Just the idea of it, though, like a, it's going to be an open world or open zone type game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so is adventure, technically. Okay. <laughs> but I'm hopeful. I'm, I honestly am, as, as cynical as I sound, I, I am really looking forward to this. So Excellent. It's uh, Sonic needs a good redemption story that's made by the people who actually make Sonic. A good redemption story might be the uh, the Series X optimized version of Sonic Generations, not mm-hmm. Generations. Yeah, no, Generations. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. Oh, right on, right yeah. on. Yeah, just saying, it runs great. It's like like a solid sixty frames a second. It's really good. Oh yeah, that was that was the last really good Sonic game I thought. Anyway, that well, yeah. that was made by Sega. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sonic Mania was also really good, but they just. Yeah, had nothing to do with it. Um, there was a trailer for Cuphead DLC. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the, the Delicious Last Chorus. Man, yeah. they're, they're really doing well for themselves, eh? That's... Yeah. Anyone ever play Cuphead? Yeah. I, I hear it's stupid art. Like, throw your controller against the wall. It ramps up pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it doesn't pull any punches. Yeah, that sounds like a let's play right there, Ryan. Yeah, some, uh, some Cuphead. I should actually. It. Uh, you're almost not too mad though, because the game looks so awesome. Yeah. Sure, sure. You're just like, ah, you got me again. You, <laughs> uh. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they showed a trailer for Star Trek Resurgence, which is um. It's made by Dramatic Labs, which is um, a developer formed of former Telltale staff. So it looks like it's going to be like another Telltale style game. But interesting, yeah. yeah. The Expanse is great, by the way. I don't know if anyone's seen that. Uh, oh, the next one up here, The Expanse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, oh. I I've been trying to find some time to watch a new season that just came out, um, but. It it's top notch sci fi. That's yeah. It's the only way you can describe it. Exactly. Like I'm constantly going, you know, that almost seems <laughs> I mean, except for some of the story plots, but all all the human stuff that's been created sci fi wise in that show just seems like, yeah, that's something that could actually be built. Like oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Right on. Um, but uh, there's an expanse telltale series coming out. Which, I thought Telltale had completely collapsed on itself, but oh, they they were resurrected. Were they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. But you're right. They, they did a bunch of people left that company, and it kind of which is sad. It, Telltale games are fantastic. I don't know. Yeah, which ones you guys have played, absolutely. But... Like um, the Batman one for the Vita was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I know the Borderlands one was supposed to be really good as well. I always yeah. went to check that out. Uh, the Wolf Among Us was fantastic. Like it's. Oh, yeah. It is really good, and that I think they were doing a sequel to that. I thought I remember seeing something like that somewhere. But I um, I got it was a PS Plus game. I think the Wolf Among Us was was a VR game as well. That's kind of like an Among Us type game. I think I might I might be way off on Hmm. that. If I'm probably am I I drink a lot. 
It's that time of year. It's that time, it's that time of year. year. It's a special <laughs> eggnog. Uh, there's a new trailer for a, a Plague Tale Requiem, which I'm super excited to play. And I'm going to make Rob watch me play. <laughs> oh, it's... I feel like I need a shower every time I see anything about either of those games. It's uh, Which is the point, I guess. It's yeah. supposed to be... Very uh, dirty. Um, there is a, a new 4X strategy game called Doom Spice Wars coming out, which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they showed off more gameplay of, uh, the new Saint Throw. The remake, remastered, reboot? Reboot, not remake, that's coming out. All right. Uh, the creator of si- Silent Hill... Announced um, he has a new game coming out called Slitterhead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. It does, right? Oh, so X Bioware dev, so a bunch of people who left Bioware after EA took them over. Um, inflection Games, they're called, and they're Edmonton based as well. They, Are they really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the trailer for the um, uh, new fantasy Victorian survival game, Nightingale. And it looked awesome. <laughs> it it really did. Have to check that out. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, there's another trailer for Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Uh, Crossfire X. It was officially announced coming to Xbox in February. Hmm. Oh, it's by Remedy. I've, there's no link to the trailer here, but I'm going to have to look that up. Apparently it's a Remedy-developed game. Okay. Yeah. They're busy. Um... Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate was announced coming to PC, and... They might want to wish they could take that one back. Yeah. 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 It, uh... <laughs> it's not... It's not being received well at all. Apparently it runs like poop. Yeah, they're saying... <clears throat> seen, uh, like, quotes like, this is the, the worst AAA PC release this year. Like, it's like yeah, that bad. If they're really, wow. really... Yeah. Really not good port. That is a bar that's um, that's a low bar. Yeah, Digital Foundry was. They were like, we uh, we humbly suggest that you don't buy it. They're just like, just just don't even. <laughs> oh, those guys are amazing. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's a man. There's a lot of stuff showing off. Like, this this is the whole reason. Like, that I was feeling like I actually missed out on something. Um. Dying Like 2, they had another cinematic trailer. Uh, what else did they announce here? Uh, Warhammer Space Marines 2. Um, they showed a trailer for Destiny 2, The Witch Queen. Uh, there's a game coming out called Tunic. Coming out in March. That uh, apparently looked really good. Um, oh, so did you guys get a chance to watch the Lord of the Rings Gollum, like, gameplay trailer? Yes, I did, yeah. How did you think that looked? Interesting, (laughs) but maybe weird. Yeah, right? (laughs) Yeah, maybe Um, weird, yeah. I was like, I was a little, I don't know, like, they really made Gollum look cartoony. Yeah, he's a little he's, Tim Burtony. Yeah, he's got big eyes. Yeah, very yeah. big eyes. Yeah. yeah. Like, but in the trailer, he almost looks like cartoony, like claymation, like, like I don't know. It was, it was yeah. very odd. Yeah. yeah, it was it, like uh, it literally looked like he was created by Tim Burton. But uh... <laughs> so uh, PUBG announced that they're going free to play. Finally, they're going to take on the Fortnite uh, model. I didn't know PUBG wasn't free. No. Okay. Yeah, I kind of thought they were free to play also, but yeah. Yeah. No. All right. They should be. Yeah. 
Um, I'm just seeing what else is going to catch Good by that. here. Um, uh, I've been hearing lots of stuff about GTFO. <laughs> it's left early access and the the full versions available now on PC. And... I did, yeah, I was just going to say I didn't know that wasn't uh, full access. I've watched guys play that for like three years. Yeah, on Let's Plays. Yeah, yeah. Freaky, freaking idea. Um, oh, and apparently Google Play announced that they're going to be bringing mobile games to PC. But you'll be able to play games between your PC and your mobile devices uh, f- uh, seamlessly. Cool. Yeah. So there was a ton announced. Yeah. Like. Yeah, there was uh, more announcements than game winners. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like this true. Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre online multiplayer game like that. Yeah, holy smokes! They should call it video game announcements and award show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But but. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's stealing the the thunder that was lost a little bit from E three. Absolutely. Kind of is how it's is how it's turned out to be, and uh, yeah, it's that. It's that flagpole event of the year. Now it's at the right time too. The holiday season gets everybody all excited for uh, for everything that's coming up, and yeah. And, uh, well, it's all in one package. It's not spread out over. Yeah. And like the schedule this year for E3 was, you know, the the majority of it was on the three or four days over that weekend. But then there was like you know a couple developers had it. E3 events yeah. like the week before yep. and then EA's yep. E3 event was like two weeks after and it's yeah. like yeah just weird but this like it was just it just seemed like it, it was one of those steamrolling things right where it just you know oh here's another here's another here like <laughs> yeah yep yep well like two a... years ago the Series X was shown off at the Game Awards they didn't hmm. do it at E3 yeah that's right that's right yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's all the winners and announcements at the Video Game Awards. Except for our loyal listeners, you're all winners too. Yeah. <laughs> Except Exa- Philly. Ex- yeah. F him. F him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, moving on to our next story here. Uh, Bloomberg has reported, and I mean, they're reputable, so it's not like it's, you know, Billy's blog, Billy's video game blog. (laughs) Billy's video game blog has reported. Yeah. (laughs) A new Um, Wii U. That uh, PlayStation is working on the very own Game Pass rival. And um, it'll be really interesting, because this one's reported as having, probably following more the Nintendo root of their like online stuff and, and going tiered like having a three-tiered service yeah they got um, some ground to cover yeah like one tier would offer you like the ps4 games and another tier would offer you ps5 and then like the final tier will offer their classic library it's kind of how bloomberg's reporting it here so, sounds kind of like an amalgamation of ps plus and ps now and right. yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> Bring us upscaled PSP games. That's all I ask for. That's yeah. See, yeah. that would that would be pretty awesome, right? But would you would you pay uh, a premium for that, Rob? Well, I don't have a PlayStation, so that's a... <laughs> so I'm gonna go with no. But if I did, it would depend on the the pricing for sure. It would be something I'd definitely be interested in. So. And there's, they didn't, they couldn't confirm whether Sony is planning to do the, like day and date stuff, that Xbox is doing. Sure. And, I mean, it seems like everything Sony stands for. It, it doesn't seem like something they'd be interested in doing. You know, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Also. PlayStation announced <laughs> that they uh, they're having their they're releasing official console covers in 2022. 
So that means PlayStation has announced they have concluded all their litigation for console coverage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that means. <laughs> they've uh, they've settled everything with D brand. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> so, I had to look up how much these are. Did you guys look up how much these are going for? No, how much? Seventy dollars. It's crazy for yeah. for a new plastic shell. For yeah. a new plastic shell for your PlayStation. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They also announced two more controllers that somehow there's a color that matches every controller. Yeah. Or, yeah, controller that matches every cover now. So there's like... Sure. I can't... Uh, are the official names here? Oh, yeah. So Midnight Black, Cosmic Red, Nova Pink... Starlight Blue and Galactic Purple. So those are the first five that are that are coming out. No wood grain, eh? No wood grain. Rich <laughs> mahogany. Rich mahogany. Yeah. So, I mean, the D brand ones, they're fifty five. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? They're just a little company, probably three D printing them themselves, you know, sort of thing. Not, uh, yeah. not, <laughs> not a major. <laughs> yeah, oof. It's just when your console is that expensive, and then it's just yeah, right. It just exactly. seems to be so bad. I don't know. Like in my mind, twenty five, thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that seems like like something I'd be like, cool. I'm gonna get. Just to match my PlayStation and controller. We remember oh, the, the 360 faceplates, man. Like, oh, you can get like you can get like 20 of them for next to nothing. Like, you can just pop them off, stick them on. Like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, the Xbox 360 faceplates. That was a big thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it it really seems like a that's a huge cash grab. They're like, well, I guess we can't make money selling, selling them a whole other PS5 that's just a different color. <laughs> we'll, we'll gouge them with. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've uh, I've been blathering on long enough. Rob, do you want to uh, do you want to take this next story? Yeah, I was actually uh, not what not a part that I would normally cover, but I actually watched this one live. Yeah. Um, the Nintendo had an Indie World stream. On what day was that again? That was last week, right? Yeah. Uh, December 15th. There we yeah. go. And uh, some interesting stuff. Um, they announced... Uh... Oh, go down the list. We'll do the same thing we do at the game show. Here. Sea of Stars, which looks like a, it's an isometric role-playing game. Um, a prequel to The Messenger. I don't know if you guys ever played that, but oh. that was... Uh... That was a really yeah. good game. The whole going from 8-bit to 16-bit vibe they had going there was was pretty cool. Um, Omari, which I think is actually a game that's been around for a while on PC, is coming to the Switch now. It's a dark, uh, emotional game. Deals with some tough, uh, <laughs> tough issues, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, I'll go through these pretty quick, because a lot of these... Um, Chicory, a colorful tail, is a magic paintbrush wielding pup. Oh, huh. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> Endling extinctions, another one. It's a, it's a woke kind of game, I suppose. Where uh, you're the role of a mother fox who must guide her three cubs to safety in a world ravaged by human-induced climate change. That one looks. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Oh, I mean, a lot of these look, it's hard to really get a, a sense of it with the indie games, right? Like, yeah. And you um, hate indie you know, games, so. I hate indie games. That's the other thing, is I hate indie games. <laughs> um, with a fiery passion. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oli Oli World is a side-scrolling skateboarding adventure. I think we just lost Damon. Did we lose Damon? I think we did. Oh, I'll keep going but uh 
Figment 2, uh, isometric game. Uh, Alicia, the Oblivion of Twin Goddesses. Uh, Locomotive was kind of a cartoony looking point and click adventure. Okay. Uh, Dungeon Munchies. Side scrolling action platformer. After Love is in. You're in a band and you're doing. It's a it's a rhythm game too, I think, right? Yeah. It looked like a really game based on love, music, and friendship. Okay. And what did I? Oh, that says it's the end of the article. But what was the game I I messaged you guys and I was like, ah, River City, uh, River City Girls Two. River City Girls Two. They're not showing it here, but um, maybe because it was far off. I was pretty excited about that because that was a game we sunk. Uh, a lot of time into so yeah um yeah dame is just messaging us here so maybe this will so yeah lots of interesting indie games and the switch is haven for the uh, indie developer like that's something yeah it, it's definitely it really flourished under it so do you know what just because i hate indie games doesn't mean that you guys have to it's true so, Okay, we're going to take one second to pause here. We'll re add Damon. Hey! Well, that was weird. <laughs> Technology hates us. Exactly. Oh, it wouldn't have been one of these shows without something like that happening. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> weird. Uh, yeah. Usually, uh, usually with Discord calls, you can just, if you get disconnected, you can just click and get right back in. Yeah, that was bizarre. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. In case you get I... dis Discord necked. Discord necked. Discord necked. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about how indie games were dumb. That was yeah. pretty much what you missed there. So status quo. Yeah. yeah. Triple A all the way. A okay. Yeah. Did it? Um. Did you get a chance to watch Indie World? I missed all? it completely. Yeah. 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 I don't know. There wasn't too much in there that caught my attention. Um, yeah. I'm still holding out for that big Nintendo Direct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, we finished up with that. Uh, <laughs> yep. Gracefully, too. Gracefully. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a belly flop right into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Damon, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us about the next one here? Oh, I got some, I got some Ubisoft news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Splinter Cell Remake is in the works. That's something. <laughs> it's something, yeah. It's you something. Bet. <laughs> it's something I, I would honestly I would be more excited about that, but uh, the the next piece of my my uh, my t titles here with the Ubisoft all in on NFTs kind of uh, kind of makes that it mars it a little bit. I don't know. Um, have you guys been talking about the NFTs and Ubisoft at all in the last few weeks on your show? No, no. no. I, I think we just mentioned that they're going to be the first developer that really really puts it out yeah. there. Yeah, so the head of Ubisoft is kind of he's they've had meetings with the employees and they've talked about how their their business wants to be all in on the NFTs. And there's been a little bit of a as you can imagine a lot of uproar from the gaming community. And I kind of had a, a few stats because they've uh, they've already started to roll out uh some NFTs for their beta for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And uh it hasn't been all that successful so far. <laughs> kind of looking at the statistics it sounds like they've uh they've sold 15 one five nfts so far for a total of one thousand seven hundred and fifty five dollars because uh like I, I don't know like ubisoft somehow managed to make an nft that not even fans of nfts want and i think that's pretty funny <laughs> um it's interesting like like i don't know exactly where this is gonna go with the nfts um like i said i, I would be more excited about uh, splinter cell if i'm not seeing that they're just i mean we've seen how loot boxes have panned out we've seen or sorry surprise mechanics we've seen how surprise, surprise mechanics, mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen how those have worked out um i'm not too sure how i feel about the the nft the, the yeah the but they're trying to monetize everything in these games any way yeah. that they possibly can. And uh, a lot of these games aren't even finished to begin with when they launch. So, Well, they're, uh, they're trying to artific like, artificially create like, like a need 
to yeah. play the game, right? Like they're exactly and yeah, like I think everyone wants to have their Pokemon cards that go with their with their game, or right. and these digital ones are the are the new hotness. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Just for the audio <laughs> listeners, I was just showing the uh, the physical product. I think the physical product Amico games, where it's uh, yeah, they were the first. I guess they were the first to do NFTs for per game. Is that would this be an NFT? Or I I always get confused. Like it's locked digitally somehow, or with that uh, RFID that um, yeah. they put it in the blockchain it's of the some blockchain, chain. Yeah. 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 Whereas I just look at it as I have physical or I have games for a system that may never come out. Um, like, I'm sure there's ways to leverage the blockchain without having to have gamers just pay for every single thing in the game. And developers just haven't figured out a way to, to make that happen. And uh, without at least angering you know, all, the, all the fans of gaming. So yeah, um, it's not ready yet. It's not quite ready. No. Well, yeah. Well, I, I read a funny article this week um, that even said that the developers don't want anything to do with this at Ubisoft right now. Yeah. And there's actually been a record amount of people leaving Ubisoft over this direction in the past few weeks. On top yeah. of all the other, uh, you know, stuff going on in the in the video game development world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's what's happening over at Ubisoft. I mean, maybe maybe Splinter Cell will be will be fantastic. I've played the first. Split. Has anyone played the first, the original Splinter Cell? It was it was amazing when it first came out. Yeah, I um, yeah. you know what? I played that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the first one. Maybe not, but, but on GameCube. That's the only one I've ever played. That makes played. sense. That was around that era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the cool part was you could plug in your uh, Game Boy Advance into the GameCube with the link cord and okay. it gave you, instead of uh, instead of giving you in the upper corner your uh, mini-map it gave it to you on the Game Boy so interesting. <laughs> it's just it's just cool yeah yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this whole NFT stuff uh, pans out yeah they're just being punished because they're not working on uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 anymore. That's right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, <laughs> Well, Rob, you want yes. to take us to our next uh I sure story? do. The, uh, the Evercade um, handheld finally released their uh, 2.0 uh, firmware. And uh, us Evercade users were kind of... We weren't put off, but the um, the versus like the the, the versus um, console, the founders editions are all out, and they have this really cool looking UI that shows all the games and thumbnails, and it, it looked really good. They had a pixel perfect option, a few other things. Yeah, and all us handheld uh, handheld people were, uh, hey, that looks really good. Can we have some of that? <laughs> so the fine folks at Blaze uh, gave it to us, and also fixed a crud ton of. Um, different little bugs throughout it too oh um so just going over some of the highlights here they fixed some audio audio bugs one in 720p um all sorts of new main menu like the ui has thumbnails of all the games now as opposed to having to scroll repeatedly through it there um the pixel perfect choice so it's before they just had um uh four by three and 16.9 but the Pixel Perfect does the it shrink it's like a little shorter as well as being four by three. Oh nice. It's it's more exact, I guess. People were asking for it. Freaking bezels. Finally. Because everything's four by three, but right. you'd have this black space, so they added bezels. Um completely redid the save. Added an option. So if you have an Evercade versus, you can now hook your Evercade handheld to it. And use it as another controller. Yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty, pretty amazing. And um, just a whole bunch of quality, quality of life intakes. Like now, you can jump when you start the game. You can start. You can jump right to your last save versus having to go 
menus and stuff. There's a play and then play with last save. Um, yeah, some performance issues, stuff like that. So, just kudos to Blaze for uh, for uh, keeping up on the handheld, not just saying uh, dropping it off to the side and focusing on the uh, the console there, which yeah. also looks pretty amazing. So, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> with uh, those founder editions coming out, the reviews have been rolling in, and it's yeah, it's getting great reviews. People are loving it. Yep. It's pretty awesome, yeah. And the fact that you're still getting physical games. <laughs> yes. Um, like real games with real cartridges. Uh, <laughs> and it's still 20, 20 to 30 bucks for a, a new thing, right? And Yeah. I'm glad they're doing really well, because when I first started, there was a, it was a cool idea, but no one was too sure how it was going to take off, and then like everyone just jumped all over it like, Metal Jesus was doing reviews and yeah, it um, looks awesome. Like I want one. Yeah, like, yeah it's, so good for them. And the price good is right, them. right? Like, and it is, it is. It is. You get a lot, a lot of value there for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, yeah, the Evercade. All right, Dame has got another short story for us here. Oh, it's the it's the story of the month. <laughs> so, uh, so, so Xbox is selling. A red ring of death poster <laughs> on their on the Xbox Gear store, oh, and that's uh, funny. the the uproar has been has been. I think it's hilarious. I I personally think that this item is actually pretty funny. Um, I can understand how a lot of people might not think it's funny, but uh, I think it's it's the poster. It was so they released a series of posters to coincide with their six part uh, documentary series that's now airing. Right, and one of the episodes itself was about the Red Ring of Death. So this was the poster to go along with that, and uh, a lot of people are really mad about how Microsoft or Xbox is trying to uh, quote unquote profit off of the Red Ring of Death now. Like and, they're celebrating uh, uh, like a yeah something that was in, uh, just the bane of so many people's existence. <laughs> right, yeah. like. Like I had also experienced the red ring of death, and mm-hmm. uh, to be fair, they just they sent me the coffin. I put it in, I sent it away. I got another one back. It didn't take very long. Uh, I could understand how a lot of people like would were let down about this, and a lot of children and stuff like that were upset by it. But the poster itself, I don't. I thought it was pretty funny, but I can get how a lot of people wouldn't think that. But <laughs> if you want some entertainment, go read the go read the Twitter comments on that on that poster oh, release. It's cesspool of. Yeah. Honestly, it's not like it happened yesterday. I mean, we're talking yeah. 10 years ago now. Yeah. We can have some fun with it. We can laugh. Exactly. The world needs some laughter. Yeah. So that was that short one. That's all. <laughs> and Rob, you got the uh, last story here? Oh, I want to screen share this one because I think we should experience this together. Okay. So I'm going to try and not break Discord. Share my screen. Uh, here we go. Go live i sure hope this works are you seeing my screen mm, this here i am now there we go okay yeah yep. it's not recording on mine um <laughs> just a second i had to i had to, to, I had to start over. i had to click start stream on mine yeah yeah and i just had to drag it to my window here okay the most broken games of 2021 <laughs> as per kotaku um i think we can all appreciate some of these uh, I think I think everyone's got their own ideas of what it might be here. Um, first one they do, I don't think is there any particular, but uh, you can see it too, Damon. Or yep, yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, the Ascent. Oh, which is interesting because we had a lot of fun with that game, but I guess it had um, some really big bugs that we didn't notice because we never did multiplayer. But supposedly multiplayer was completely broken. Oh, right out of the gate. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem like the worst one because it seemed like the game was still pretty playable and they fixed it and everything ended up all right. But uh, okay, yeah. yeah, that one's kind of a surprise one. It is. Yeah. It is. Right. Number two here, Battlefield twenty forty two. Yeah, no um, surprises there. <laughs> so, uh, quoting some of the things that weren't quite ready: vehicles were busted, some buildings lacked collision. <laughs> Players were blowing up tanks with sniper rifles. <laughs> uh, this has some bad language, so if yeah. anyone's actually reading this, we apologize. Worst reviewed game in November, um, excessive crashing issues. 
I believe with you, people would have trouble shooting people, right? That was this game here where yep. it just mm -hmm. it, bullet detection was atrocious. And uh, yeah, it was eighty dollars. So <laughs> yeah, um, for the standard edition. For this <laughs> exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So broken. I don't know. Did have they patched a lot of it? Up? Like, is it still, or is oh, it still really? I remember broken? we were talking two weeks ago about the roadmap. That, That's right. It's like That's a three right. month ordeal. It's not even. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So no disagreements here. No. Nope. Battlefield Twenty Four Two. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> e football twenty twenty two. This I heard so many good. This was the um. <laughs> they renamed it, right? It was that uh, P Soccer, or whatever it was, Performance Soccer. Mm. Konami's long-standing game. Yeah. Uh, blocky hit detection. Some of the memes I've seen the memes on this, where the guys are like, like their their face is all uh, distorted and yeah. So I don't think any of us played this, but uh, no, there's some pretty funny videos out there though. If yeah. You know. Yeah. If you go check it out, like just the rubber rubber doll physics of your characters and yeah, <laughs> yeah. it, it kind of reminded me like W uh, WWE two K yes. twenty or whatever that yeah. one yeah where they'd show like people vibrating through the mat and yeah faces missing and stuff so because Katam Konami just uh yeah they can't get out of their own way all right next one Grand Theft Auto oh. the trilogy the definitive the edition. definitive edition. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, if, if that's what they wanted to be known for, like the, yeah. the edition, wow. Yeah. Where do you start with this? Like, just broken. Um, yeah, they dropped the ball on that one for sure. And then they, as they did it, they removed all the other ways to play it at the same time. So you have to play this. And it was the definitive edition. They've since put a lot of them back, but um, just broken. And there's some really good videos on this too. Like Rerez does a really good one as to why, what was going on, and um, just a lot of the issues. Like the company's very small that did this. Um, they were trying to use an auto importing program for doing the textures. It worked good with some games and not with others. And yeah. just yeah, a, a game that could have used a lot of time. Well, it's such a surprise announcement too. Like yeah. they, they kind of like it'd been rumored, and then they announced it like coming out two months after they announced it. Yeah, it just yeah, definitely need more time in the oven. So no disagreements here. This Not one's <laughs> all right. What's next? Oh, okay. Um, New World, the Amazon game. Oh. I thought this one was oh the uh what all blocky on my uh, my end here yeah the, the image is blocky here too okay okay um I'll I'll just do the 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 Coles notes and yeah. it's uh I think I think the big thing is the um they had some supposedly it would brick expensive graphics cards like it actually oh comes my goodness right I've heard of, I've, actually I've heard about that yeah yeah. yeah. I don't know. Was that AMD cards? I thought it was AMD cards, but uh, I don't remember. Uh, again, off it the top was. of my head, but... it was because there was someone with like a thirty eighty that, yeah, it basically melted. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know the easiest thing to get a replacement for right now, right? right. So, yeah, you just, you just pop down to Best Buy. Yeah, yeah. And then the the lack of servers because Amazon doesn't have a giant set of data centers that they could have possibly tapped into to have enough servers. Um, yeah, bad game. So I also just read this week that, uh, um, so they've been, uh, to make the servers not seem so empty because a lot of people were playing it, but a lot of people mm -hmm. have left now. So okay. they have bots in the game. They've added these bots to make the world still feel full. But that these bots, but these bots are fishing in the game. And <laughs> selling their fish at crazy amounts and just crashing the economy of all the of the servers that they're on because they're they have they're they're just oh. flooding the market with all these fish and just. <laughs> well, that is funny. Yeah. Amazon, New World. Next. 
Is it still blocky on your guys? Is there? Yeah. Yep. Oh dear. Um, the next one they have is Returnal, believe it or not. Oh. Well. Um, even though it did just win Best Action Game, but I guess it was in a very bad state when it launched. Yeah. Um, save files became corrupted. That was the big thing. Yeah. Trophies unlocking, not unlocking, display hidden requirements that got fixed. Uh, the inability to suspend the game mid run. Mm-hmm. Um. Supposedly, a lot of this has been patched, um, and it's really quite playable now. So, again, another redemption story. Uh, Returnal. Returnal. There you go. Good game, bad name. Outriders. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember this. It seemed like this launched for a ago. Mm-hmm. A lot of broken saves in that one, too. Yeah, that had uh, bugs that wiped out all your gear. Day one issues made it difficult to connect to the always online servers. Glitches that instantly killed players. Mm-hmm. Um, it had, and so the developer and publisher, People Can Fly, has reported in August it still hasn't received any royalties from Square Enix. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it hadn't done well enough to get to the royalty section. So that's bad. That's bad. But it's not the last one. Oh, no, it was, because it just went to another. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can get back to this without... Stop hey, streaming. There we go. All I'm right. Back. Yeah, I love this time of year for all the lists that, uh, that, that are coming yeah. out. Yeah, I think uh, most incomplete game should be a, should be an award. Like a kind of like a kind of like a Razzie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Let's uh, let's move on into what we've been playing, and why don't we start with Damon? Because you uh, you haven't been here in the longest time, so. So I've been on the Game Pass. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's no, this, no. Uh, Tell me more. It's no. kind of, it's kind of oh, like the Netflix of gaming or something. But anyways, oh, okay. Uh, something called Halo on there. I checked it out. Pretty good. <laughs> I've been playing the campaign of Halo Infinite, and uh, it's uh, it's good. It's good. It's good to be back. It's good to play. It's good to play a Halo game. Uh, I've been hearing kind of some uh, some kind of murmurs, some rumors. Uh, I haven't been able to find. Uh, I guess Jason Schreier is putting something together, but apparently, a ton of content has been cut from Halo Infinite in order to get it into its release state. Uh, which is interesting. Like I heard up to like three quarters of the game was actually cut out. Um, so I don't know. It's like I said, it's oh. rumored, but uh, well. I mean that 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 speaks to the fact that there's probably going to be a lot of amazing DLC coming up because what's there right now is extremely playable. Uh, the moment to moment gunplay is fantastic. Um, it's uh, like I wasn't expecting like uh, you know the you know the the Halo Three. I was just expecting. I wanted a good Halo game to play once again and and this is it this is everything about it in the campaign and the multiplayer has been fantastic uh i know ryan says you've been playing that a little bit what, yeah. have, what have you found yeah so i like it yeah. but i don't have any previous halo campaign experience ah uh, so yeah i'm kind of taking like like i'm trying out different ways of playing it like i'm playing it i'm playing it I tried for a bit playing it how I played like um, Division Two, or um, you know, like just any other shooter. And I, I think I need to adjust the way I play because I, mm-hmm. I die a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, even just playing it on normal, um, I think there's a. I think you you probably have a lot of muscle memory from playing all the previous ones that. that yeah, would... it it doesn't really cater to a lot of new players in the sense where like you climb in a vehicle and it kind of expects you to know how to drive the vehicle yeah you wouldn't know that like oh like the bumper does this or like there's different ways different ways you can control things and like uh, it doesn't really like the halo games back in the day they kind of explain stuff like oh yeah shielded enemies you you shoot them with uh, like plasma weapons to get the shields down you switch your weapon over to like your battle rifle and then you can one shot them. Like it doesn't explain that for new players. It kind of assumes that you know that. Yeah. And uh, even the story, it's like, no, it doesn't really, it's just like, no, you're a new guy. It's all good. Just shoot the aliens, right? It doesn't really tell you anything. Um, so I think 
they missed a little bit of that. It's not a perfect game, guaranteed. Like yeah. I'm probably sitting somewhere around an eight and a half on it. Um, it it is missing glaringly co-op. Co-op yes. campaign is is fantastic. Uh, yeah. But yeah. that also being said, um, like Halo for me was always something. Each of the games was I experienced them playing through by myself at first because when you're playing with friends or people like you're talking about other random stuff and you're kind of missing a little bit of the narrative but uh it it looks like halo infinite like i said it looks fantastic and the the sound design is phenomenal like the music is like the best i've heard since probably halo 3 and uh like 343 is really they've done a great job on it um, I'm glad I had another year to bake in the oven. I can't imagine what it would have been like if this was released last Christmas when we were talking about it. Uh, it would have been on that Kotaku list that Rob just called up. <laughs> no, uh, I, yeah, I they... if, 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 like, the controls don't feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like you said, sound design is awesome. And, that, like, there have been a couple, like, oh, yeah, moments, like, right before the right before the title screen rolls, that whole part yep. where you're descending through the ship. Yeah, exactly. That was awesome. I was like, "Yeah, this is fun," but like just exactly. some of the just some of the big firefights I got into, like um, right before you do that descent, that whole control room, I probably right. had to do it six or seven times before I didn't die, and I was getting like overwhelmed by by like the aliens shooting at me. Exactly, and the uh, it's pretty generous with the auto saves as well. I've actually yes. heard that be a negative. Uh, oh. I've heard some people people get save locked. That's like, they it saves like right before they're in a, like a, a unescapable moment kind of thing. I've heard that happen <laughs> to a few people. So I don't know if they've adjusted that or not, but it uh, it it wants you to get back into the action right away, and uh, and that was always the way that it was uh, in the past as well. So yeah, Halo Infinite. I'm happy with it, and I'm going to be playing that more throughout the holidays for sure. Awesome. And. and uh, the next game I I played, I know Rob's played this, was Psychonauts yeah. 2. Yeah, I'm interested and to hear what you thought. I feel that Psychonauts 2 got a Game Awards snub more than once because it's awesome, uh, especially for art direction. Oh yeah, um, what a <laughs> what an amazing thing to play. Like it's, uh, I, like I understand that like Deathloop had a cool Art Deco style, but in my opinion, it doesn't hold a candle just to the variety and. Uh, imagination everything. like yeah it, is, it takes yeah. it the, the incredible imagination um, i'm really excited to see what double five can come up with next because uh psychonauts 2 is right up there for my game of the year like oh, right on. yeah i really liked it what did you think of it Rob? oh i thought it was an absolutely amazing game like um yeah. just like to get into tim schaefer's head sometimes it's like some of the worlds and the designs and things he comes up with like just uh yeah definitely i could have seen that one very least taking home for sure yep. and uh, yeah a really solid platformer and um really enjoyed and, it and yeah. funny like it was yeah like, a very I good humor la- absolutely. like it was laughing yeah. all the whole way through and like i don't want to give away too much but like uh the right radar- right off at the start and uh it picks up right after the where the first psychonauts left off and your character rasputin he's now become the titular psychonaut and uh, the, the group and um it's not exactly what he thought it would be he's kind of at a desk <laughs> and stuff like that and and the bad guy from the first game they're uh, they're trying to get him to to give up the name of who he was working for and and the way that they've devised in order to do this was to uh was to give him uh, a company vacation and in order for him to in order for him to like they, he wins wins a vacation and in order for him to be approved on it he has to get it signed by his boss so they're all trying to get <laughs> it's like okay yeah no problem you go get this signed by your boss and then yeah. we'll send you on your vacation he's like oh i've never won anything before this is great yeah just get it signed by your boss the guy that you work for just the the humor behind it is fantastic yeah. and uh, yeah. definitely something that uh, i'll be playing more of again so and then lastly um I checked with that Unreal demo because you have to check with that Unreal demo. It was Unreal. Yeah, it was Unreal. So many polygons. Yeah, all the polygons. <laughs> for days. All at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, even just to check out for a half hour, I think everyone should just see what a glimpse of actual next gen really is because we're still in that cross gen kind of area right now. Yeah. And. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
it makes me really excited for the kind of things that we're going to see like down the road. I know the initiative, they're using the new Unreal Engine to make their next Gears of War game. So mm. I mean, like it's and I've heard that's way off. I heard that's like three years away. So, mm-hmm. um, yep, we got a glimpse of the future. Yeah. Thanks to uh, thanks to the Unreal Engine and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> thanks, Keanu. Whoa. He's, bre- he's breathtaking. Whoa. Yeah. Well, he's involved in all the big game game changing yeah. things. Yeah. Well, Rob, you want to uh, you want to go next? If you're all done Absolutely. there, Damon. Oh yeah, I'm all, okay. all wrapped up. So I uh, played a little Back for Blood, and actually Ryan and I ended up playing a little bit while as well. And um, we were commenting in the beginning just how <laughs> and how easy it was. We're like, oh, we really should have turned. And we hit this wall. <laughs> and then we had Ryan's friend Sean join us, and we kept hitting that wall. Yeah. And so I, I, I was looking up, and I'm like, this is because this is the easiest skill level. And I mean, we're not... We're not um, gaming gurus, but I mean, should be able to beat the third level of a of the first game, of, the of an third FPS chapter of the easy. first level, right? Yeah, right. yeah. So I start started to look into it, and evidently it's built into the game that way, um, because there is a roguelike aspect where you get these cards, these boost cards, and so you get these as you beat and die the game. You get these supply points, and you get these use these supply points to open up chains, and then you can buy other cards for your deck. And it's like a Slay the Spire kind of idea, where you want to move these better cards up to the top of the deck, and then when you, when you try these missions again, you have these much better perk cards, and you're able to actually beat it a little easier. Yeah. So that was evidently what we were missing because we kept throwing ourselves against the wall, <laughs> being like, and it was like, I mean, it was it was like um, it wasn't like we were close in this mission. Like we would, no, we had maybe once where we got both of these explosives on a ferry, and then probably got swarmed by three thousand zombies and died. Um, and and died. we were trying everything, like we were died. trying different yeah. cards, different characters, because all the characters got have different um, abilities. And different weapon con like we were yeah. like we well probably a good like seven eight times maybe even yeah. more like we absolutely we were giving it the old college try <laughs> that's for yeah sure. and it, it was getting frustrating and now that I actually like aspect to it it makes a little more sense and so I went back and played a little bit after and I'm like okay you know get some more cards you take the old cards out so you don't get the you get the better bonuses at the beginning and it's having a little more fun with it so but. We'll have to try it again another time. So, so did, did they fix it though, Rob? Because I I didn't think you could collect those points to buy the cards in single player. Uh, you can't do it on offline. But you can do an online game With and a... just have and then just have a private lobby. Oh, and and you'll still get the okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So gotcha. that's uh, gotcha. Okay. Which is kind of an interesting way to do it, because also this game has some the worst pod AI. Um Yeah. It's better than it supposedly yeah. was, but there are lots of videos of them, like the guy going and meleeing the big ogre, which is the uh, gigantic <laughs> freaking boss, which, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But uh, it's a lot of fun. And, and again, on Game Pass, like I wouldn't have paid 80 bucks for this, but on Game Pass, it's it's got a lot of fun. The the, the shooting feels great. Like the, mm-hmm. the actual game aspects of it are very good. It's just the, um, has some bugs. Has some bugs. Yeah, but not enough so, so you're gonna you're saying you'll be back for back for blood i'll be back for back for blood that's right that's, that's good. right good and uh other than that i was playing some more evercade because i've played talk about evercade enough on this channel um i've uh with some christmas money i have i will be having the complete set of the cartridges here shortly um once they're released on january 14th but the one I was playing uh, a lot of time with was a Jalico collection. Oh. And uh, maybe not a developer you guys really think of too often. They had a bunch of uh, games you probably do remember and didn't know that was them. Like, uh, excuse the camera there, but Astinax. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh totally um, rads on there. Totally, totally rads rad. on there. <laughs> yeah. uh, City Connection, like Rival Turf. Um, 
Right Earth Defense Force, team. which I'd forgotten about, but is an amazing oh, yeah. shooter game and uh, so just a, a lot of bangers on it for again. So Rival Turf, bucks. Rob, that that has my award for the weirdest SNES cover, like cover yes, art. Yes, yep, absolutely. It was the most bizarre cover art. So yep. you look it up. If it's not on there right now, I think someone needs to look it up. It's pretty funny. So totally rad. Oh no, no uh, uh, Rival Turf. Rival oh, Turf. Rival has Turf. Been... Yeah, you talking the one with the two guys in the? Yeah, this is two dudes. This is two dudes. Yeah, actually, I can two zoom in on the uh, straight here. Now it's probably the. Yeah, I don't know how well it's showing oh. up, but it's like a yeah. it's some a couple of a couple of white teenage guys. Um, Get some red boost. leather jacket with the collar popped. And two dudes. <laughs> another guy behind going. Yeah. I remember <laughs> renting that when I was a kid. I was like, okay, let's do it. But great game. Yeah, it great is good. game. Just a really weird cover and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, totally rad. I'd forgot how much fun that was too. And just like a real acid trip. So what? What do you do in that game again? You're a wizard, and you're getting trained, and it's a totally rad wizard, and you're trying to rescue. I believe your girlfriend gets captured. Okay. And you got to go rescue her, and you've got this like big, goofy clown-looking head wizard trainer, and yeah. I'm going to have to look some stuff up on that, because I, I know I rented that a bunch of times. Yeah, because it was totally rad. Because it was totally rad. The yeah. cutscenes in it are the best part. Like, it's an 8-bit game, so the cutscenes are static images with words, but just so much a product of the time. Like, just gnarly, most excellent, and all things that we all said back in the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, again... The, the the ever cage is just a freaking amazing thing. It's twenty bucks. It's a physical game with a physical cartridge. You get uh, everyone's a little bit different, but you get manual with where, where they tell you how to play the game, and it's actually each game, and it's got right up on it and game art and just it's just really well done. You're gonna sell. And, you're gonna make me buy one of these things, Rob. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> so uh, another thing I, that might make you do it is uh, they're starting to. It's getting harder and harder to buy the cartridges. Uh oh. The backordered ones, which is why I've been trying to keep on top of. This. Best Buy used to have like all of them, and you'd you'd order them, and it's like now they're down to like three. Or same thing. Oh. Amazon, the newer ones now. Um, you can find them on eBay and stuff, but people are starting to raise the price. They're still not bad, but they're starting to raise the price. So, um, but if you do get one, you can borrow any of mine. So, yeah, awesome. <laughs> and they're starting to do like I also ordered some of the like. So far, it's just been console games, but they have um, the the they have three new ones which. An Atari one, a, a Galico, and then a Data East, I believe. There is one more. Where it's the actual arcade ROMs. Right. That's yeah. actually pretty exciting. So, yeah, the arcade. Sweet. Three. Totally rad. Totally rad. <laughs> totally rad. And with that, uh, what would you ride? Well, yeah. So I, I totally, I had a whole idea that I was going to do this whole episode and I totally forgot about it. We just got talking about the video game awards and right into it. So I'll, I'll save it for my, uh, just my little bit of talking here. Cause I, I only had three things in here and I've kind of talked about two of them already, uh, the Halo campaign and, uh, the Matrix Awakens demo. But for the, uh, loop hero... On um, Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch. <laughs> it's my elf voice changer. <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, my, my family, family loves when I pull this thing out. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, yeah. <laughs> A voice changer. That's that's. Yeah, it's an elf one. It's, uh... Cool, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Definitely something. <laughs> um, so the last thing uh, that I, I didn't talk about was uh, Loop Hero finally came out on Switch. And nice. I picked it up. 
Um, and this is this is going to be in my top five for sure when we do our top five lists here. Oh, spoilers. spoilers. And uh, I got to say, great port. Like, I was a little, like, because, I mean, I played it on PC where you're using mouse all the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, and it, like, this game needs to come out on mobile. It'll yeah. it'll just kill on mobile. I mean, it's got, it's got 16-bit graphics, so it can handle it. And, uh, yeah. But they, no, they did a really great job. Um, it feels a little slower. And I, I think that's just due to the fact that um, I, and I gotta double check in the settings, but when you're playing on on PC, like you're always your guy's always walking until you you hit spacebar to kind of stop him. But mm. on the console, he stops after every encounter, mm. and that really kind of really kind of slows things down a little bit. Because I mean, when I'm playing on PC, sometimes I'll just let him go through five fights because you don't do any of the actual fighting. It's all just oh. it's all just kind of okay. decided for you. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of a deck builder, but you know you the cards you get you place on the loop. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, it uh, it's uh, it's very original game, and I think that's what what definitely draws me to it. But the uh, the Switch port, uh, yeah, they did a really really great job with it. So it seems, it seems like the kind of game just made for the Switch, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's oh yeah, great for those kind of games. Yep. I hear that a lot. It seems like a right fit for the Switch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's got its own. It's got its own um, niche, yeah. like the Intellivision Amico. Yeah, it's totally got its. Does. Yeah, yeah, for the. All right, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I guess we can uh, we can wrap up the show now. Um, thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. If you want to check out more of our stuff, you can. Uh, Go to the grumpyoldgamers.com. That's where we post all of our original content. And uh, look us up on Facebook, the Grumpy Old Gamers. We have a main page where we post all the... Uh... <laughs> Yay! Happy New Year! Oh. Where, uh, <laughs> we have a, the main Grumpy Old Gamer page where we post all our news. And then uh, we have a forum page where people come in and ask questions, um, share things that they've learned, uh, friend of mine posted on there just last week. She was blown away by the fact that uh, she found this video for the Wii where you could use two candles for the sensor bar if your sensor bar mm. was broken. Yeah. And the, the infrared and the candles still worked with, like made it so your controller would work. And mm-hmm. she was like, she posted and she's like, is this real or is this people, someone messing with me? And it's like, no, no, that actually, yeah. that actually works. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I should mention we actually we got an email, right, Rob? Um, we did, we from, did actually. Yeah, let's cover that quick if we got time here. Yeah, we got. Well, we do. We, seeing as we own this hard drive that we're going <laughs> to. Um, yes. Do you want to? You have it up handy, or? Yeah, I do. So it's from uh, Gary, and he uh, he asked. He said he loved the review of the Super Retrocade. Yeah. And um, he ha- he got one last week. And apart from one issue that's happened to me, I was wondering if uh, you had you had experienced it, Rob. Um, and it's when playing two-player games, if both characters walk in the same direction, then the player's character who is walking in that direction first locks in that direction and then just keeps walking no matter which direction you try and go. Which... Yeah. That's a very specific bug. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, Gary, I have I didn't because I did not do a lot of the two player stuff on that. I definitely I have to dig for the super retrocade to give that a try, but I might actually try and replicate that here for you. So I'll I'll get an answer to you as to whether I saw it or not. I think there is a further update you can get for the super retrocade. Uh, just off the top of my head, I'm not too sure, and that might be the kind of thing it fixes. Um, I'm trying to remember, it's it's been a long time since used it but i'll get back to you on that i appreciate the 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 kind words about the review though it is uh it was a pretty awesome little system there um i would play it more if it wasn't for the controllers Uh, right the list of compatible controllers is very small (laughs) Uh, nothing i had would replace it and the controllers were garbage it was 
it was really kind of wrecking of the of the uh, of the <laughs> like the I'm waving my arms experience yes experience, the experience ambience. there you yeah. go yeah yeah so but now that you've mentioned it uh, I'm gonna whip it out again and the hey, super this is the family show, well. Rob. and the super retrocade as well. <laughs> Well, thank you, Gary, for the email. And if you have any questions for us, you can email us at makeusgrumpy at gmail.com. You know, we love to hear from you. We'll talk about it here. We'll get a response to you, too. And, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, thanks, everyone, for watching. And I uh, hope to see you next week. Bye. And uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry All Christmas. Christmas. Happy, happy New Year. Year. I can't Bye. top that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's... Good night. Yeah. Good night. Hmm. <laughs>